In this video, I'll show you how I found a product that makes over $66,000 per month in less than 10 minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually jump into my computer and I'll show you all the steps from, you know, the what criteria I used, exactly how I did it, uh, you know, where I went, how long it took, and also how I sourced it, how much it would cost to uh, launch the product, and show you some, you know, some uh, things to avoid as a complete beginner, um, and and uh, you know how to use this product to completely uh, scale your business on Amazon. So without any further ado, let's jump into my computer, and I'll show you what's going on. So the very first thing that you must do is that you must have some type of a criteria that you want to start with. And number two, which is very important that you must have a tool that's going to help you. Otherwise, you're going to be just kind of a, a, a blind person in the dark, just not knowing where to even start. For us, we personally love to use Helium 10. It's a tool that we've been using for the last couple of years. This is what, you know, this is the tool that we use our students uh, or use to teach our students inside of our program. And below this video in the description, there is going to be a link to get Helium 10 at 50% off uh, first month or 10% off every other month. So be sure to check it out. Uh, also, if this is your very first time to the channel, consider subscribing as we drop several videos every single month teaching you about how to crush it on Amazon and other methods and other strategies on how to really gain control over your life and completely uh, uh, make something you know out of your life. So um, let's go to get started. Um, the very first thing that I wanted to uh, do is that I wanted to build my criteria. So this is going to be criteria. So in this, uh, you know, in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, um, I said that my criteria is going to be minimum $8,000 uh, per month, AK a month in sales, right? Uh, not more than, so max 300 reviews and then uh, max $70 uh, price. Okay, so those were the three things that I wanted to focus on. $8,000 a month in sales, at least minimum, uh, not more than 300 reviews, and max price was $70, right? Now you can play around with these numbers as you like. Uh, and in our program, we actually teach our students how to create their own criteria based on their um, based on their budget, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen videos where they tell you look for products that sell between 15 or 35 or 15 to 25 or whatever. That's cool. But if you've got a $20,000, $30,000 budget, why should you go for products that are lower, you know, uh, lower uh, um, item uh, and the higher item prices are less competitive, number one. Number two, there's more net profits, net margins, and you can make them work better. So monthly revenue, I'm going to say minimum $8,000. Uh, price, I'm going to say maximum 70. Review count, maximum uh, 300. And then the categories, I wanted to do personal, uh, beauty, health and household, home and kitchen, and pet supplies. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So um, categories, I think that's how you spell it. So health and household, uh, pet supplies, beauty, uh, kitchen and dining. Okay, uh, there are 10, uh, we call them holy grail uh, criteria, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, categories that we like to uh, look for or look within. However, uh, for just this video, we're gonna say those four, okay? And then that's it. And then I said, okay, cool. I'm gonna run my search, right? And then I just kind of, you know, what this does is that the tool will go to Amazon from the millions of products. It'll pull products that only match this very specific criteria. Now you can do other things. You can go to like, you know, here and say, okay, I don't want products that are too large because your shipping is going to be too high or whatever. I just kind of kept it simple. Um, you can go to advanced and you can get a little crazy here. I just kept it simple again. And then I just kept on going through here. Usually what I like to do is like, just kind of scroll through. Common, I guess. That's that's the word that I'm looking for. Anything that's common, sorry, I was trying to see if I'm recording. Anything that's common, I actually make sure that I don't, um, that I don't go for, right? Um, and I just kind of skip. So then I, what I did is I just kept, kind of kept on going and then going, going, going. Um, this kind of, you know, intrigued me, uh, whole horse blankets, but I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to sell horse blankets, right? It kind of sounds weird. So I just kind of kept on going, going, going. And then every single page has, um, I'm not sure what the setting is, but I think default setting is like 20, 20 per page or something like that. It's either 20 or 50, let's see. 
should tell you here somewhere. Well, 200 products, everything, but I thought it gives you the option to like choose how many it shows you. Okay, anyways, I kept on going again. Um, you know, there are several things that, like this is very common. Like, I don't know, I just didn't see it. And I've, I, obviously over the years I've built like a, um, like kind of a six or seventh sense, I don't know, seven, eight, how many senses are there? I'm not sure. Uh, to, to like products, right? Um, and like, I see products and I can just like right away say, okay, yes or no, right? Like these are old rugs, you know, I didn't like them. And then I came across this thing and I was like, what is that? So blinds, okay, interesting. So then what I did is I clicked on here and then I came to this page, right? And then I came to the actual page of the product and I was like, oh, this is, interesting this is unique never seen this before right so then what i like to do is once i am interested in a product i try to get a keyword from the title so the keyword from the title for me was this i can't i don't know how you pronounce this i think it's fa fox i'm not sure whatever would blind because with blind is going to be too broad it'll bring you all kinds of different um products and i say riches are in the niches so this is kind of like niching down a little bit Right. So I said, OK, I clicked at this and then I came here and then I searched it and then I ran X-ray. This is another tool. So this is called black box and then this is called X-ray. Right. Where it simply pulls up all of the, you know, all of the the sellers and then their monthly revenue price, all that stuff. Right. I was like, oh, this is unique. Look at this. Price is good. It's not 70 quiet, but it's pretty high. OK. Revenue, look at this, $60,000, dollars $66, That's pretty awesome. You know, everybody is above 30, 40,000, right? That's cool. I like that. And then the other thing that I also like to look at is the date that these listings were created. I want depth. I want listings and, and products that have been around for at least six to 12 months, right? So when I didn't see that, I was like, all right, well, let me look at this graph which this actually shows me the, you know, how long this niche been around. So if you go to old time, it'll show you how long it's been around and it's been around since 19. And as you can see, the search volume is 800. Search volume now is 400. So when it first launched, it was double what it is right now. So obviously right now it's kind of down a little bit, but the, <clears throat> when it first launched, it was high because what I don't want to see is I don't want to see very low and then like a trend, a trend up, that kind of scares me. Like if I saw something like this, that would scare me because at the top it was 1700 and now it's 800, it's almost three times more. And if I don't see this, I'm kind of scared. Like, okay, is this gonna keep going up or is it gonna drop? Like, I wanna see some, I wanna see, um, what's the word? I want to see like, not depth, but I want to see, a listing and a niche been around for some time. So that way it's proven itself. You know, I don't like to see niches that are like doing this, but it's only been around for four or five months because this means it's been, you know, especially now with TikTok, uh, a girl with 20 million followers will go on TikTok and make a video about something and then a product will blow up, but then she'll stop making videos about it. The trend will go and then all of a sudden the product goes down. And that's not, you know, that's just not a good way of, of running business, right? So I like that. Now, one thing, one issue that I have is that the product, the, the keyword has 422 um, search volume. I want keywords that have a minimum of two or 3,000 monthly search volume. For my launch, I'm going to launch with at least two keywords that have between two to 4,000 or maybe even 5,000 monthly search volume. So for me to find other keywords that are relevant to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to magnet another tool inside of Helium 10. I'm going to put my main keyword. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let magnet suggest other keywords for me. And I'm gonna look at search volume. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort by high to low. And then obviously this is too high for me, right? I'm gonna start looking right here, right below 10,000. So wood blinds. Wood blinds is a great keyword, but it's probably a little too broad, right? Or maybe it's not, I don't know, you know? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna run x-ray again and I'm gonna look at the niche. Obviously the keyword has great search volume, but I'm also gonna look at the niche and see how it is. See if I could see similar um, numbers to what I saw earlier, similar volume, similar um, consistency in numbers and in revenue and all that, right? 
Um, and I'm going to compare the two. And then I'm going to keep going down the list on all the keywords that I search. And I want them to be as relevant as possible to the main one, which is the FA, whatever. The FA, FOX, however you pronounce that, is probably a sub niche of a niche because the niche is wood blinds, right? That's just kind of what we said we were going to do. But then because we thought, okay, um, you know, um, wood blind would be too broad. That's why we went, we added the FA. But then now let's look at wood blind. So that's with an S, right? So let's look at how this is going to look. And sorry that it's taking forever to load, but hopefully it'll load here sometimes uh, today. All right, so now what I like to always do is I like to remove sponsored listings just simply because those are paying to be here. And as their budget runs out and as more bid for more, you know, these, these, these listings are going to change. So you don't want to be comparing what you're doing to them, right? Now, you know, the search volume is good. I want to look at depth and see how long this, this uh, thing has been around. And, you know, it's got, it's got good volume. It's not seasonal, right? So that's the other thing, seasonal. What am I going to be looking for? Seasonality, right? So I'm going to be looking for seasonality. Uh, keyword volume of 2K to, say, 5K, right? Um, uh, niche depth or length of existence on market um, equals minimum, I wanna say four months, let's just say six to 12 months just to be safe, right? Um, and then we're gonna look at, you know, I, and then we're gonna look at other stuff. All right, and then I'll, I'll kind of keep going there. So, so then now what I wanna do is I wanna look at, see like, I'm looking, do you see this? That's the other thing. I want to look at consistency. And then we have um, formulas in our program where we teach what consistency means and within like what percentage and stuff like that. I just don't want to spend too much time. But like, let me just show you. Do you see this revenue? This to me is consistent. These prices are to me consistent. Consistent based on what I'm looking for, right? But then see when I look at something like this, this is not consistent. Do you see how like 100,000, 30, 30,000, 4,000, 700, 5, like what? It's kind of weird. Like, do you see this and do you see this? So much more consistency. So although I found a keyword that's got only 400 monthly search volume, but it's not very high, but I love the consistency where this one has 8,000 and it's not very. And that usually happens when you drill down into a sub niche. And that's the other thing that you want to do is you want to go for a sub niche, right? So that's, the, that's very important is that you go for a sub niche because you see what happens is this produces consistency right? The sub niche does. Okay. So my goal right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep looking until I find another one or two keywords that have similar consistency, but are in that two to 5,000 monthly search volume. Okay. Now, once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to what is called Alibaba. And this is where I'm going to start looking for suppliers to find my product, right? My goal is what I want to do is I want to go to my niche and I want to say, what is the average price? What is the differentiation? How am I going to differentiate? How am I going to stand out? And what is my price, right? How much am I going to sell it for? So that, that's going to be the second. The other thing is um, find supplier uh, to purchase at 25 to 35% of sell price. So example would be if sell price um is equals $25 um, cost, DDP cost equals, um, grab my calculator real quick. So uh, 50 times 0 0.25 is 1250, 1250 to 50 times 0 0.35 is 1750. Okay, um, and then the other thing is um, DDP equals manufacturing plus shipping to AMZ warehouse. In other words, we're doing FBA. Okay, hope this helps. All right, by the way, if you guys are finding value in this, in this video, be sure that you guys are smashing the thumbs up button and please drop your comments in the comment section. We wanna know what questions you have. 
And also, if you're like, Bashar, this sounds great. I love what you're teaching here. I love what you're talking about, but this sounds a little more complicated than just me watching a 20 minute video and going out there and investing thousands of dollars. And I would rather have someone actually hold my hand and walk me through this entire thing. Right below this video, there is a short presentation that walks you through how this all works and how you can become part of BJK University. So be sure to check it out if you're interested in that. Now let's keep going. So uh, the other thing that I want to look at is I want to go here and I want to start finding a supplier. So say we're going to we're going to sell it for fifty dollars. So now we know that twelve fifty to seventeen fifty is going to be our um, our sell price, uh, our purchase price. The other thing is uh, here is something. So twenty five percent should be profit, right? And that is if only if uh, DDP equals 25% um, advertising equals 25% and then FBA fees equal 25%. So this is kind of what we focus on. It's the reason why we want our DDP price to be at 25 to 35%. I say another 10, you know, 10%, that's fine. Because even if my profit is, is, is um, you know, is 15%, is, uh, I'm okay with that because this Advertising fee is not going to be on every single unit, meaning if I'm running PPC and say my PPC is really costing me 35%, not every single sale that I'm generating is going to come through PPC. 40% should come from PPC, 60% should be organic. So on 60% of orders, this is going to be added to my profit. On 60% of my orders, even if this is 15%, it's going to be really 15 plus uh, 25, which would be 40% that profit. So I'm okay with even uh, getting 15% uh, of profits, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, and then we're just gonna keep on looking until we find a supplier that's going to give us what we're looking for. And, and obviously I don't wanna spend too much time because you know I only have so much time to cover here. But the, one, the other thing that you wanna look at is how are you gonna differentiate? Differentiation, right? Differentiation, um, differentiation plus value add. Okay, and then a the, uh, couple of things to do that is uh, read negative comments. So that's the very first thing. And then the second thing is uh, search your main keyword in other marketplaces. So uh, example, example here is if you're selling in the US, search in UK, Canada, Mexico, Germany, et cetera, right? Uh, and then you wanna see what ideas that they have in those marketplaces that you can potentially take and implement in, in the US marketplace. Uh, the other thing would be uh, read negative comments to see what, what customers are complaining about uh, so that way you can make your product better. And then the other thing would be, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, frequently, uh, how do you? Frequently bought together. Okay, so frequently bought together. There you go. And if you go to any listing, so if you click on any listing, say let's just go here, uh, right below every single listing, there is going to be a, um, there is going to be the section called frequently bought together. So usually it's like right here somewhere. Sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't show, sometimes it just needs some time to load not related not related because related is usually the same exact product we usually frequently bought together it gives you ideas like customers that buy this also buys this and this gives you ideas to like create bundles in in the to, so you can so that you can stand out and and and, uh, and add value to your product okay so once you've done that obviously now what do you want to do is you want to start negotiating with suppliers and so on now here is here's the issue here so um let's go back to um, let me see. So let's remove this black box. All right. So let's go back to, let's go back to this. And here's what I want to show you guys. So, um, so what I want to show you guys is this right here. So um, as you can see here, let's remove the sponsored ones because we don't want to, as you can see, there were completely different products. Um, so here, here's the thing that we want to look for is, 
So this is, you know, you've got you've got competitors, and see now we see competitors as high as one hundred and forty four thousand dollars per month, right? Now, if you are a complete beginner, if you've never sold on Amazon, this would probably be a terrible product for you to start with. And here is a couple of reasons why. First of all, your reviews. Remember when I said I want to be below three hundred? So when I want to be below three hundred, I want not more than three or four of the top ten sellers to have above three hundred. So not more than not more than top um not more than three four top sellers top 10 sellers to have more than 300 reviews right so you know right now we're when we're looking you know there's only really one two i mean you can maybe say this and this but you do you see how you know everybody else is like above so you don't want to really be be um, you know you don't want to really be com uh, competing against these guys because they're very competitive. The other thing is to launch a product that's first that has an average price of you know it says here sixty five dollars, but even if we're going to launch it for fifty dollars, here's something that you want to think about. So um, uh, launch well not launch but let's just think about product. So product budget right. Um, equals, say we're going to start with 300 units and say that um, say that we're going to get it for for 25%, which is uh, we said what, 1250? So 300 times 1250 times 1250 equals $3,750, right? This is just for the product. Now this is to get it at 1250. Now what if we were to get it at 35%? So what is it 1750 times uh, 300? This is 5250. Right? 50 uh, 5250. So this is uh, 35% and then this is uh, 25%. Right. So just kind of depends if you get it at 20, you know, up to right. So between this and this. So one thing they have to think about is you need at least this much to uh, to make this work just for the product. Now, the second thing they also have to look about is that you need another five hundred dollars. So plus another five hundred at least for uh, product photos. Uh, if you hire someone to do your listing, if you also need like a tool or something. And we have a video where we talk about all the um all the costs that is uh, that are associated with with uh, uh, you know Amazon and how much it costs and stuff like that, uh, tools, etc. Okay, and then you also need need a launch budget, so you need to do uh, giveaways and all that stuff. And again, we have other videos that where we talk about uh, PPC and give. Well, no, PPC is not shouldn't really be included, but where you do giveaways, which is going to be another five hundred to a thousand dollars, right? So again, if you've got ten thousand dollars to launch this product, great, you see the potential here. But if you've got anything less than five to ten thousand dollars, this probably would not be a good product for you to start, especially if you are even even if you have ten thousand dollars and you are a complete uh, beginner. I probably would say don't do a product like this. Do something that's a little bit less comp competitive. And there are products like that. Again, it literally took me about five minutes to find this product to, to you know, just for the sake of this video. And I was just kind of going through and I just thought of a criteria right off, you know, off the top of my head. And this is why like criteria, and up until now, we've been teaching our students where, look, here is the criteria, go find a product that, that finds this criteria. And that's a wrong way of doing it because, People have different goals in life. People have different budgets. And it's, you know, it's not a one size fits all. You should tailor your own criteria based on your own budget. You should create your own criteria. I would say these should be con this should be constant. You know, you shouldn't at least um, I would say uh, you know, three to four, minimum three to four among top 10 sellers. Right. So at least three to four of the top 10 sellers should not have more than 300 reviews. Right. I would say this should stay constant regardless of the price that you're going to sell at, how much search volume it needs, how much money, whatever. Right. Uh, and then these are great categories to start with. Um, if I had to add would be baby uh, and then office supplies. Uh, but just be, be a little careful from this and this and this because sometimes they could be restricted or sometimes they could be um 
you know, they could be uh, very like kind of competitive. If you want something super vanilla, I would say one, two, and three. These are like super vanilla, you know, easy to go. You can probably find great products here that are not very competitive. Again, hope you guys found this video valuable. Be sure to smash the thumbs up button and give our channel a subscribe. Hope you found this video valuable. If you want to learn directly from us, be sure to check out the presentation below this video where we'll walk you through exactly how to find the right product, how to launch it on Amazon and completely crush it. See you in the next video. Take care.